Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. I get questions all the time about mastering. What is mastering? This word seems to be flying around everywhere, especially when you're getting into music production. It can be a very confusing thing. And that's why I want to try and clear up some of that confusion today by telling you what mastering is, where it sits on the timeline of your first song idea and the publishing of your song. I mean, somewhere in between mastering is going to happen, right? I'm also going to show you what an unmastered waveform looks like so that you can tell the difference between mastering and unmastered waveforms and I'm also going to show you some insert effects that are traditionally used in a mastering effects chain. So let's just get right into it. To get a better understanding where mastering sits in the entire sound production chain, let's take a look at the classic Studio One song page right here, which is where you are probably doing the majority of your songwriting. This is the environment where we have a ton of different tracks, like right here I have a more or less finished song production and all of these tracks are going into various buses here, into bus channels, and at the end they're going into a master channel. I'm already kind of spoiling here, uh, pardon me. <laughs> Basically, mixing and mastering are subsequent processes. So mastering comes after mixing, and traditionally in the mastering process we only work with one stereo file. So essentially mastering is the refinement of the mixing and making sure that everything meets certain targets, loudness targets for example, before this song goes out to distribution. You can think of mastering as some kind of loudness and quality control for the mixing stage. In Studio One, it's actually really easy to send a finished mix over to the mastering environment, the project page. Let me show you how that's done. So once you have your mix ready to go, you're ready to basically turn this into a WAV or MP3 file, then you want to open up the marker track that is right here in the global track list. And if you don't see this, then you probably don't have your track width expanded far enough so that you get this drop down menu here. In that case, you can simply click on this drop down menu and select the marker track from here. Then you want to make sure that the start and end markers are set in accordance to the song length, right? And after you've done that, you go to song, add to project, new project. And this is how you could send your finished Studio One mix over to the dedicated project page for mastering for the final touch-ups. You do not need to use the project page in Studio One. You can also do the mastering process right there on the song page on the output. But the project page has several advantages. It's just a more focused workflow that's specifically designed for mastering. And if you'd like to learn more about this workflow and why we recommend to use the project page for mastering instead of the song page, then please check out my video where I summarize all of these points for you. Great, so we answered the question what mastering is and where it stands in the timeline of the song production process. But how can you differentiate a mastered waveform from a mixed waveform? For example, let's assume that a friend is asking you for mastering of their song. How can you see if it's even fit for mastering or if it has been mastered already perhaps? Let's say this is the waveform that I've received. Is it mastered or not? Well, there's not really an objective right or wrong answer here, but from my point of view, this is not a mastered waveform and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, there's a lot of headroom in this audio file. How can I tell? Well, there's a lot of empty space here between the waveform in black and the ceiling of this track container. And I can confirm this by clicking on loudness information here on the project page. It's gonna measure the loudness of the entire song. And it tells me that the true peak level, meaning the maximum loudness reached in this audio file is minus 2.4 decibels on the left channel and minus 1.4 decibels on the right channel. But even more importantly, the integrated loudness is just minus 16.5 LUFS, which is very low. Usually if you upload something to Spotify, you want to hit at least minus 14 LUFS. So clearly the loudness of this piece has not been maxed out yet. And there's another indicator, which is the loudness units right here. So the loudness range is almost 10 dB. 
that is a lot. This means that there's still a lot of dynamics, a lot of loud and quiet happening in this piece. And while that sounds like something desirable at first, it's not necessarily the case because if somebody listens to this in the car, for instance, and they're driving on a noisy road or something like that, then especially here in the middle section where you see these spiky transients, it's quite likely that you're just hearing these spiky transients and everything else is basically just drowned out by the road noise unless you really crank up the volume. But we don't want that. We want people to be able to hear the full mix at all times. So in order to call this a master, I would probably still apply a bit of compression. Which leads me nicely to the next talking point when we talk about mastering. What kind of plugins would I recommend or are usually used in this mastering process? Now I do want to note that it's very difficult to simplify the answer because it's so dependent on what kind of genre this is, what kind of music style you're mixing and mastering, what kind of loudness target you're trying to hit. But in general, you could say that the equalizer, the compressor and the limiter are probably the most important tools that you're going to find. Other tools that are quite common are, for example, stereo wideners, even though you have to be a bit careful with that and always mind your mono compatibility. This this is why the project page is Studio One has a face meter built in. To show you what a basic mastering chain could look like, I've inserted one of my favorite starting points that are saved as an effects chain. You can do that by clicking on this drop down arrow in the insert list and then store effects chain. And this is just a pro EQ then a multiband dynamics, which is essentially a multiband compressor, which gives me a bit more control over each of the individual frequency bands. And most importantly, a limiter, which allows me to raise the average loudness while still keeping the same peak level of minus one at the very maximum. This is so that we avoid clipping, which could be potentially fatal at this stage of the release process. Once we've applied all of these effects, the waveform is going to look considerably different and we have the result, the mastered waveform here on the right. So if you compare the two, just from a visual standpoint, you can already see that there's much less headroom, meaning the space between the black waveform and its container is smaller. And also the dynamic range, meaning the difference between the loud and the quiet parts of the signals is smaller. The transients just don't stick out as much as they did here in the original unmastered file. And of course, you could completely exaggerate it until the waveform looks kind of like this. That would be a very 2006 thing to do. But fortunately, in the days of streaming, we do not need to normalize to these crazy loudness targets anymore. Everything gets normalized down to usually minus 13 LUFS anyway by the providers. So yeah, this is, I think, what a modern master waveform should look like. Good average loudness, clean peaks, but still detectable transients, and yet not such huge dips between the intro and the outro, for example, because then all of that just gets drowned out and only the transients hit the listener's ear, which is not ideal. Hopefully this gave you a better understanding of what mastering is and how to approach it. And thank you for watching.